Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this cool looking maze pattern inside Microsoft Word. And the inspiration for this tutorial comes from the YouTube video from Coding Train where they actually put this on the Arduino and the OLED display. We will just done this in Microsoft Word today. Here is how the maze is being drawn. We will start with dividing our page into with invisible grid. And for each cell of this grid we will draw a diagonal line. And the diagonal line will either go from left top to bottom right or from left bottom to top right. And the way how we will decide which line to draw is simply by calling a random function and based on the value of the random function we will draw one or the another. You know, you can see the grid in here but as, as soon as we remove the grid we get this nice looking ma pseudo maze pattern. It's not a real maze because there is probably no way out of the maze but it kind of looks cool and it's, it's super easy to do. So let's jump into Word, start with a blank document and open the developer's ribbon. If you don't see it, just right click and select customize ribbon and make sure that the developer checkbox is being checked. Then I will jump into macros and create a new macro for this document, which I will probably call draw maze. I will create a new macro and then we need few things. We need to know how many columns we will have. So I will have a new dim columns as long and how many rows we have. So dim rows as long. We also need the size of the grid, which will probably be just one number. Let's call it grid size as double this time, because this could be a decimal number. And then we have to initialize those uh, variables. So columns, we can set, for example, to 10. We will have 10 different lines for each line. And then rows could be some small number, maybe five. We will start with less shapes. You will see later on that with more shapes, Word you know, performance is not that good. Then we have to calculate the grid size. The grid size will be the page width divided by number of columns. So let's say active document dot page setup dot page width equals to sorry divided by uh, number of columns. Okay, so I think that we have all we need. So we can start constructing a loop where we will loop for each individual cell inside our invisible grid. So let's say for counter rows going from zero to rows, do something and then say next counter rows and also for counter columns going from zero to columns, do something and then say next counter columns. And the do something means we need to draw a line. So let's draw a line active document dot shapes dot add line and we need to have the begin position and end position so the begin position will be the counter begin x will be counter columns times grid size begin y is counter rows times grid size and the end x and y is just the same as begin x and y but increased by the size of one cell so the end will be this one but the counter counts will be plus one and same for and y it will be the start position but the counter rows will be increased by one so plus one this one i will close everything and say select just so it works so let's try to run this macro I've uh, you know moved my icons a little bit so I can see more of the code. So the run is on the left side. So if I run the macro, we will get a lot of different lines. Immediately we will notice that we probably have more lines that's than five. That's because we are uh, looping from zero to five. So we have six different lines. It's probably not a big problem on the rows, but for the columns, if I delete this one and select everything, you can see a little bit of highlight on the right side that means that one line is being drawn off the screen outside the page it doesn't you know do anything bad but we don't need this line at all so what i can do is i can say loop for rows minus one and columns minus one this one this time or this way we should get only five different rows and nothing is outside of the screen now this, right now it looks like we have long lines being drawn over the document but those are individual lines we just need to draw them in a different way one will be drawn like this but a few of them will be rotated 90 degrees and that's actually what we can do we can either 
set a very custom line drawing function that is uh, changed the way how the line is being drawn or we can keep this function and just rotate the shape after it's being drawn so that's probably what I will do we will test the random function so if random number is bigger than 0.5 then we will set the rot I don't know some variable like a rotate being 0 and if it's smaller then rotate will be 90 degrees it doesn't matter if we switch those two angles we just need to you know somehow test this i will say and if and i will say with this line which is just being drawn we want to set the rotation to be our new variable rotate and I'll select and if so i can try to run this and hopefully if everything i'll first delete everything if everything works fine i should get the maze looking pattern which is what exactly what i get in here so i think that's that's it but we can still do a lot of different things i don't hate uh, really hate this default blue color so we can change maybe the color line dot the four color dot object team color to maybe i don't know three or so i don't know which color is this one but it's definitely not the blue one we can for example change the transparency so let's say it's a line dot transparency yes it goes from 0 to 1. 0 means it's not transparent at all, 1 means it's fully transparent. And we can probably make it transparent based on the Y position. So the lines on the top will be less transparent and the lines on the bottom will be more transparent. So let's use somehow the counter rows. The counter rows gives us number from 0 to number of rows. So if I divide it by rows, it should get us number from 0 to 1. Actually, because we are not going to rows, but to rows minus one, it will never give us one, which is good in this case, because if we would set this to one, it would be fully transparent. So let's run this again and see what happens. So we have blue and black lines, and it's fading towards the bottom. What we can do is we can maybe have more lines. Maybe I can set the columns to be 20. This will give us 100 shapes. It also takes a while until it's drawn inside Microsoft Word. Maybe I can select everything and I can maybe change the uh, line width. And you can see that if I select everything with uh, Ctrl A, it doesn't give me the ribbon to change anything for the selected shapes because also the text is being selected in here on the left side. So what we have to do is after we draw everything, I want to select everything and there is easy way how to do it. I will say active document that shapes that select all so if i run this again after all the lines are being drawn i should be have all those lines selected so i can just uh, group everything together and then i can change outline width for example you will notice that because those lines are you know aligned properly but the endings are set to certain value they are not quite connected if i open the format object options i can set the different cap type to maybe square but it will be overlapping not really like a fading effect so one option is to when you when you have something you quite don't like you can try to hide it or you can go the other way around and you can try to emphasize it so let's see what happens if i try to emphasize it let's say for example by adding some uh, arrow type and it doesn't have to be arrow it could be like a circle and as long as i add the circle you know the connections look much better i can maybe try it to make it a little bit smaller like this and i will also add this to end arrow smaller circle and suddenly have a very interesting looking pattern and i think that should be it for now thanks for watching before I actually end the tutorial, here is the complete code, just so you can take a look. And that's it.